So the next part of this process is me baking the light map. Now I am not going to uh, separate out the light maps. I'm going to use one light map for all of this. So I need to unwrap all of these materials onto the same secondary UV set. It needs to be the secondary UV set because 3JS and Mozilla Hubs uh, have it set up to where that the secondary UV set will always be read as a light map. So the first one is on there by default. And you can see if I just select this and I go over to my UV editor, I can see there's my unwraps and this is definitely not the way I would have unwrapped it, but it is a way that works. Um, so I will just select that and I will hit the plus sign. So you're going to see that the secondary UV map is already here. And I like to change this to light map just so for my own uh, for, for ease of understanding. And I'll do the same thing here. Now, when I duplicate these, they are actually duplicates of the original. So you'll see that they are exactly the same as the original. So if I go light map or UV map, they're exactly the same. But I'm going to overwrite the light map with a new one that includes every other asset in here. So in here, I'm going to just duplicate this, call this one light map. And what other materials do we have? Again, the materials manager, I see we have dot stroke. I don't know what that is. Uh, emissive, glass, ground, lantern. Did I do the glass? Nope, I didn't do the glass. Okay, here's my light map. Now that I have a secondary light map for all of my objects, I'm actually going to separate the ground from the lantern because it would be a little bit silly to have the ground on its on the same light map as the lantern. Since the ground is a perfect square, it can be its own light map quite efficiently, and uh, it will just disrupt everything else to include it on the lantern. So I will select everything in the lantern. That's everything, cool. And I will go into edit mode. I will hit A to select it all. I will go to UV and I never use the light map pack. The light map pack is very efficient, but it is terribly ugly. It provides you with horrific stretching. It is very typically not the way to go. What I like to do is use the smart UV project and there are a variety of unwrap add-ons that you can use that are very powerful or other software if you're unwrapping in other software. But I'll just use the smart UV project for now and I'll say to 0.01 island margin. So that way we have a little bit of space between each asset here. Now, if I select them all, there's my light map pack. Not very pretty. This is seriously a problem. Having all these individual polygons shaped like this is not going to be fun in terms of baking um, because you'll get all this kind of mit mapping and, and all these bleeding errors and there's, there's all kinds of issues with it. So you want it to be um, better than this. And one of the things that sometimes happens with the GLB file, which I wondered if happened with this one, is that the vertices are no longer merged. So sometimes you just have to hit one to, you have to go into edit mode, hit one to select the vertices, hit A to select everything, and then go to merge vertices by distance. And if I do that, let's see, it uh, removed 15,000 vertices. So there were 15,000 duplicate vertices sitting on top of each other. And I think that was part of the reason why we were getting so many tiny little islands. So let's try this again. I'm going to select all the faces. Am I selecting everything? Nope. I'm going to select all these objects here. Not you. There we go. And select all the faces. And then go ahead and try that re-unwrap that smart UV project again. This time 0.01 was a little bit much. I'm going to go with 0 .05, 0 0.005. There we go. That looks a little bit nicer. Again, this is not really ideal on how I would like to unwrap these. I would like to have them vertical um, instead of circle because you can see there's a lot of wasted space on the inside of each one of these circles. Um, I, I typically uh, prefer to have disks like this. Very often I would rather have them unwrapped into a straight line and that does have you a little bit of stretching on the inside or outside um, but it makes your uv packing so efficient that it's worth it to me to have that tiny bit of stretching but again for now as a demonstration this is good enough and i'm going to bake these light maps together so now that our uvs are set up i'm going to start the baking process first thing we need to do is create a couple nodes in the shader graph here the first one would be a uv node and i'm just going to hit q because it's in my quick favorites but if it's not in yours you can go to add input uv map if you right click on that you can hit add to quick favorites and then it will appear here boop and the next thing is an image texture which is add texture image texture again that's in my um quick 
favorites. So there it is, image texture. And then the last one is actually a hubs component. It's the Moz light map settings. So right there. And this, I'm just going to set the light map. I'm going to plug the UVs into the vector of that image. And I'm going to plug the color into the light map there. Now the current standards are setting this intensity to pi or 3.14 for physically accurate light maps. That's going to be adding or actually multiplying this light map on top of the rest of the PBR shader. So now we need to create a, an image here. I'm just going to, you can set this to whatever resolution you want. Um, I like 2K light maps in general. Um, for this one, I'm just going to go with 1024 just so it's nice and quick. I'm going to call this LB for light bake and then lantern. And then I like to include the amount of samples that I used just so that I have my own um, information on that. So 16 samples and it's a 1K texture. Check mark this little box here, 32-bit float, and hit OK. I'm going to do the same thing for the ground here. And I'm just going to create the UV map, create the image texture, and create the Mozilla light map settings. Oops. Plug that one into there, set this one to pi, plug this one into here, and set this one to the light map. And then I'm going to call this LB floor 16 samples and then 1K. 32 bit float and hit OK. Awesome. So I'll bake each one of these one at a time. So the way we bake it, actually, I'll bake them all together. Now, the way that we bake them all together is we're going to select this geo and then we're going to select the image that we're going to bake to. This can be a little bit of a sensitive process because you, if you accidentally select the wrong image node or if you're not selecting the right image node, you can very easily overwrite files, lose files, um, bake to nothing, all kinds of very sensitive problems. There are a few different uh, plugins that allow light baking to go a little bit smoother. I have a video on the Nuxella light mapper and also Pelinor from the Hubs Discord has a really powerful Hubs component uh, add-on that, uh, that allows you to select all of the Mozilla light maps and all of the images that are plugged into those all at once, which is very, very convenient. I'm not going to uh, do use that this time, though, because I don't think you have it. So now, if I selected the ground and I select this light map, I can select the lantern, and I'll select that light map and then I'll go over here to my render properties tab and down here on my bake type I'm going to go to diffuse I'm going to turn on direct and indirect and turn off color otherwise your color map will bake to the same file we just want the direct and indirect light now if they're all selected here I'm going to set my samples here to 16 because that's what I named the file as. There are some really nice uh, new noise threshold parameters that you can use in Blender 3.0. Um, not going to mess with that right now, though. Yes, they they are uh, functional. Um, oh, that was just a viewport. Made that mistake before. I want to make sure I'm in the render category here, and I set this to 16. And now all I have to do is cross my fingers and hit bake and see you on the other side. Little pro tip, if you hold your mouse over the baking file, it will tell you how long it's been baking for and how long it estimates to have left. Pretty cool trick. Okay, it appears as if my baking is done and you can tell that it's not the highest quality bake. Um, though it's not bad, it has the bump map information baked into the lighting here. We have a, a bright light shining in that direction. Um, and we have the uh, lantern ring here on the ground. And if I go to the lantern right here, you can see there's my bake of the lantern and it's got uh, all this light information on it. Again, these unwraps are definitely going to limit the uh, possible quality here. But with better unwraps and higher render bake settings, we can get some really, really nice stuff out of this. But just for demonstration purposes, this is good enough. Next thing we need to do, first thing right away, is save these files. Because right now they're stored in memory, which means if you have a crash or you close Blender, they're gone. So if you have a nice 12 hour render that overnight bakes and you don't save it, it's gone. Take it from somebody who's had that happen to them. I'm just gonna save this. And when I save this, I want to make sure that I'm saving not a PNG, but a Radiance HDR file. 
Okay, LB Lantern 16 sample 1K dot HDR. Same thing for the floor. I'm going to set that to Radiance HDR and then save as image. Next, I'm going to file, save as. So save it as a new version here and then file export GLB and export that out. When I export out the GLB, which I have hotkeyed to F11, you can do that just by right clicking on it and assign shortcut. Um, I want to make sure I'm including the selected objects only, and I've only selected the objects I want to export, and I'll make sure that the extensions hubs component is checked on, then I export that out. And once it's finished baking, I'm just going to hop over to hubs.mozilla.com so I can test out the scene. When I hit create room, it's going to create a scene and a room ID, and at the end of that, I'm just going to add this URL parameter, debug, all lowercase, capital L, local, capital S, scene. This debug local scene with a capital L and S. And that URL parameter allows me to drag and drop GLB files into the room. And instead of just bringing them in, it's actually going to change the scene ID to that GLB file only for the local user. So this is a great way to test things out. You have to be signed in, but if you notice, all I have to do is drag and drop this GLB in and it changes the whole scene to a custom URL, which if I walk over there, I can see, oh, there's my lan lantern. Oh, and the UVs are a little bit messed up here. So I'm going to see if I can repair that. So they didn't bake to the correct UV set, which I'm not sure exactly why. I just want to make this UV map here, set that to light map, plug that in, select this image, and see if I can rebake this. So I'll select this image, select the lantern, and go ahead and hit bake. There it goes, it went ahead and it baked. So I'm not sure why this didn't work before, but you have to make sure that it is baking to the right UV set. Now, if I select everything, I'll hit F11 to export the GLB, just hit export again, pop over to my room, and drag and drop the new GLB into the scene, and I believe that that should work. I'm gonna leave that in though, so in case that happens to you, you can fix it too. Yes, it is working and I didn't select everything. So if I'll select it all and hit F11 and then re-export this. Then re-drag and drop that in. There we are. And you can see that the reflections are working. We have a baked map on there. The emission isn't quite as bright as it could be, but that's not because the light isn't bright enough. It's basically because the glass is too opaque. So I might lower that substantially. And uh, overall, the scene brightness in general could be increased. And there's a couple ways we can do that. We can either pop over to our scene properties here and increase the exposure. It's already at five, that's a lot. Um, but if I put that at 25, it should be at one by default and I re-export this. Then when I drag and drop that file in here, it should be a lot brighter. It is, yeah, you can see that it's, that's actually changing our camera brightness. And now we have a bunch of different materials inside of hubs that we can tweak to our liking. If we want it to be brighter or darker, we can go into the individual hubs components here and we can increase them or decrease them, though leaving them at pi is going to be physically accurate. We can change the exposure. You know, I recommend leaving this at 1.0 and actually changing the intensity of the lights that you have in the scene, whether that be that point light that's contributing to the bake or if it's during the daytime, we're gonna have a brighter world background node that, that might be at something like 1.0. But basically you have a bunch of different levers and that you can adjust and pull one way or another in order to make this creatively work inside of hubs. Now you might notice that it's a little bit difficult to see the light map on here on this metal container. And that's because you may notice as you're looking at this metal lamp here that it doesn't seem to have that strong of a light bake on it. You can see on the ground, we can actually see it darkening here. We can see that kind of ambient occlusion from underneath where it gets really dark where the lantern is. And we're not really getting as much of that on the metal material here. And that's because pure metal objects don't actually reflect any diffuse light. They only reflect specular light. So 
when given a 100% metal object, Blender won't bake any diffuse lighting for it, and 3JS won't apply a diffuse light bake map to a 100% metal object. So you may not even need a light map for a 100% metal object because it may be discounted because it's going to use the environment map, that equal rectangular map we rendered instead for specular reflections. So you'll notice that the back here is darker than the front here, but it may not necessarily be because of a light map. It may actually just be because what it is reflecting is of lower brightness than what it is reflecting on the front. So your environment map, that echo rectangular map that we rendered and applied to the hub's environment settings parameters in the scene settings, that will actually kind of act as your light bake map. So with many metal materials, you may get away with not even having any light bake maps. You may just use that environment map if it's located in the right spot. Now there are available reflection probes which allow you to have multiple environment maps. And we'll get into that in another video. If you want to have a video on that topic, drop a comment below, please. I need that engagement. I need that encouragement. Otherwise, all this knowledge just sits in my brain and doesn't get anywhere else. I hope this video series was helpful. If I skipped over anything or something wasn't said or explained quite well enough for you to understand it, or you're having any issues implementing any of these techniques, please let me know. Drop a comment. I'm very active on here in that I will respond to absolutely everything and I will make sure that I answer your questions. So please let me know what you're struggling with and we'll make it work together. This whole series has been brought to you by Utopia VR and these guys are seriously awesome. If you are overwhelmed with making these spaces and working in this 3D art and this is way outside of the wheelhouse that you want to be an expert in and you just need a space ready to go, then go to utopiavr.com. They're renting out spaces all the time to all different types of people and all different types of purposes and needs. And they have a huge range of spaces that are really, really cool. So check it out, utopiavr.com. And uh, hey, thank you so much for, for watching.